Okay, hello. Uh, I'm David Moon. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Michigan, uh, and this is joint work with Andrew Blinn and Cyrus Omar. Uh, so when you write code, you need to navigate a continuum between the hierarchical and the linear. Uh, for example, when using a text editor, you type your code as a linear sequence of characters, uh, which are then parsed into a hierarchical term of the underlying language. Your editor analyzes and annotates the term and then propagates that information back to the text as decorations, uh, such as syntax highlighting, the red squiggles, etc. cetera. Uh, and the problem with this editing model is that the parsing step often fails. Uh, which compromises all the downstream steps and thus all the tooling that we rely on as type-driven developers. Uh, for this reason, over the past 50 years, many have argued that we should be using structure editors to write code. Uh, and the basic idea is that using a structure editor, you operate directly on the term structure. Uh, and thus, you always have a well-structured term, and your editor can always provide useful feedback. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite so simple as this. Uh, the term needs to be projected into a concrete view, typically onto the two-dimensional pixel grid uh, of your screen. And the specific choice of projection can vary greatly. Uh, for example, you, can, you might have the drag and droppable blocks of Scratch, um, or the keyboard-driven text-like interface of JetBrains MPS. Um, Whatever the projection, structure editors have a long-standing reputation of being too slow or hard to use. Uh, and baked into this, this model of structure editing I'm showing you is, I think, a fundamental disconnect between what you see and what you can do. Uh, you see a linearized representation of your code, but your edits are still restricted to the hierarchical term structure, uh, which can lead to a jarring or cumbersome editing experience. Uh, and this becomes especially apparent when you try to modify existing code, as I'll show you by example in MPS. So here's a little, uh, little structure editor that was generated using uh, MPS. MPS is a, um, a structure editor generator or language org mesh. Uh, and here, what I've, what I've typed here is a, um, a simple uh, little sequence of nested applications. We should interpret these brackets as function application here. Uh, and this is actually a, a study task we gave our participants in a lab study that I'll be telling you about shortly. Um, and so the, in, in this task, uh, the goal is to uh, take the, um, is to transfer these two arguments, y times z minus y and z times y minus z, uh, out from the innermost application out to the end. And so uh, really what I want to do is I want to swap these in, 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 the, in, in this textual projection. Uh, what that amounts to is swapping these two closing brackets and uh, these two uh, sets of brackets, bracketed arguments here. Um, but uh, so if I go to uh, sort of directly select those two ranges that I want to swap, um, you'll see that the selection behavior kind of rounds up in this sort of unexpected way, perhaps, uh, if you're not used to uh, these sorts of uh, uh, structure editors. Um, and so the problem is that because we're, um, we're always operating directly on the term structure, uh, uh, because we're always operating on the term structure, uh, we can't actually select um, sort of partial terms like just these closing brackets or the two bracketed arguments here. And so what you end up having to do is something like select this argument, cut it, then uh, delete those brackets, and then go out of here, go over here, construct that, and then you have to do the same thing for this other argument here. Um, okay. Um, and so this, uh, while you know, this is a very simple editing example um, and didn't take that much time, give, especially because I'm used to this interface, um, this, uh, this kind of thing can really add up and especially discourage novices from uh, using structure editors and also professionals from, uh, uh, because it's just too inefficient. It just takes too much 
extra uh, movement and manipulation. Um, so uh, here's the choice today for navigating this hierarchical linear space. Uh, you can either write code using a text editor uh, and deal with brittle tooling, or you can use a projectional structure editor and deal with cumbersome editing. Um, in this work, we propose another way of navigating this hierarchical linear space that we think makes better trade-offs between usability and structural requirements. Uh, we call this approach tile-based editing. Uh, and rather than restricting you to either the purely linear or purely hierarchical structure of your code, a tile-based editor lets you operate on three distinct structural levels. At the top are the familiar purely hierarchical terms. Uh, for example, here, the, uh, the two and the parenthesized three plus four are children of the overall times expression. At the bottom are shards, which correspond to the lexical tokens of your code. Uh, and here, the left and right parentheses shards are distinct structures that are related sequentially. And finally, in the middle are tiles, which correspond to complete sets of matching tokens. Uh, tiles encode both linear and hierarchical structure. Uh, for example, here, the uh, for example, here, the times tile and the parentheses tile are in sequence, while the three plus four is a child of the parentheses tile. Um, and a tile-based editor lets you operate on any of these levels, disassembling hierarchical structures into their sequential components as needed. And meanwhile, system aids assist and guide your manipulation uh, of those sequential components to ensure they can be re reassembled back into well-formed hierarchies. Uh, and I'll show you more of these structures in system aid shortly. Uh, so here's a roadmap for the rest of this talk. Uh, I'll start with a live demo of Tyler, a minimal tile-based editor prototype, where I'll give you more examples of these structures and describe how the grouter and the backpack help ensure proper reassembly. Uh, I'll then tell you about a lab study we ran to evaluate Tyler's usability, comparing it to a text editor and a traditional structure editor. Uh, and finally, if there's time, I'll touch on our current work on scaling up Tyler to a practical authoring tool. All right, demo time. So uh, yeah, I'm going to set up a little simple program here. Um, and so now what, I'm, what I'm showing you here is Tyler, this uh, very tiny tile-based editor. Uh, and let me start by saying that uh, Tyler is a totally impractical authoring tool, at least in this version. Uh, you can only construct single character number literals and variables. Um, the, you can only construct single line ex, uh, expressions in this tiny language with no types or evaluation. Uh, the point of this prototype is to illustrate the core ideas of tile-based editing. Um, and as suggested by this, um, our overview figure, uh, we can neatly divide the design of Tyler into two independent subsystems, the grouter and the backpack, uh, that operate at distinct points between the structural levels. So we'll start with uh, the terms tiles and the grouter, which lets us go back up. Um, so, um, you know, as I pan my cursor over this edit state, you'll notice that um, at every point touching my carrot is this uh, sort of hexagonal shape. Uh, and there are, uh, uh, so overall, you see that there's this hexagon outline here. Um, and uh, these are just the regular terms that we're used to. So, um, you know, if I move over here, we see that this application is nested within this let, and if we move over to this F, it's, it was nested within this application. Um, and so, yeah, we can see that nested structure over here. Um, and if I now turn on a uh, 
well, modifier. Uh, if if I turn on this uh, tile view of Tyler, uh, Tyler shows uh, us the disassembled tile view of uh, the edit state. Um, and so tiles, uh, unlike the strictly convex terms, can uh, are have more heterogeneous shapes. They can have concave tips as well. Uh, and so the different combinations of left and right convex or concave tips uh, enumerate the different possibilities that you can take in uh, the, the, the different roles that they can play in operator sequences. So for example, here, this let tile is acting as a prefix, unary prefix operator. Uh, the F is acting like a, uh, is an operand. And this, uh, these brackets here are acting like a postfix operator. Um, now, having disassembled these, now have, having this kind of linearized tile structure is uh, is quite nice for being able to just sort of linearly construct operator sequences. Uh, so, for example, if I wanted to just extend this uh, sequence here, I can just do times and four. Uh, and so, you'll notice that in in so doing, uh, there was this little uh, special tile inserted. So, this is a this is an example of a grout. Um, so, uh, and I will, so here what I'm showing you here is a, um, is a more detailed view of what's happening under the hood as I uh, performed that linear editing sequence. Uh, and the goal is again to make sure that whatever tiles we, uh, whatever tiles we construct, we wanna make sure that they sort of fit together properly into those convex hexagons uh, so that, uh, and that's equivalent to being able to parse it back into a term. Um, so here, uh, it, we first uh, inserted this tile here, um, this concave tile, or times tile. Uh, and uh, Tyler noticed that the overall shape is no longer convex. So it inserted this piece of convex grout to uh, restore convexity. Uh, and then when I typed four, uh, it noticed there's this shape inconsistency here and in particular with one of the grouts. So it, uh, Tyler then removes that from the edit sequence or from the, um, from the tile sequence. And this is a you know, purely like sequentially local um, operation that's going on. Oops. Um, and now uh, I, I, I'm referring to these convex grout and yes, there are also concave grout. So if I delete this times uh, tile here, uh, Tyler replaces it with this uh, concave grout placeholder. Um, and uh, so in tr traditional structure editors have um, holes which correspond to convex grout, uh, but they don't have a, a corresponding notion to these concave grout. Uh, and so this can cause uh, some, this can cause problems in the uh, editing experience for term-based, for traditional structure editing where you might delete uh, the, the root of some large expression with multiple children. And uh, there's only, uh, in, in these settings, you can save at most one child of that node you're deleting. And so what you end up deleting uh, a, whole bunch of your pro, uh, a whole bunch of your code that you are not expecting, if you're unfamiliar with, this, with uh, that kind of editor. Um, and in this setting, um, the concave route allow you to save all the kids, um, and so um, in, in, in the term, you know, in in the term-based perspective, uh, the convex grout are uh, is a placeholder for when you have zero things where you're expecting exactly one thing, and the concave grout allow you to uh, uh, sort of uh, patch over having multiple things where you're you're expecting exactly one thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. So the next, the next part of the uh, yeah, the next part of this design overview, I'm going to talk about the uh, the backpack, uh, which helps us uh, uh, reassemble shards back into tiles. Um, so um, let me let me set up that uh, example that we were looking at before. OK. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, so at the, in this setting, we can make arbitrary range selections. And as we do this, uh, Tyler will disassemble these hierarchical structures into their linear components. Uh, and so here I've selected this uh, pair of tiles here. And to do that editing sequence that, we, that I was describing earlier, uh, I can select this, I can simply cut it, and then uh, now what I've done is I've picked this up, picked up this, these tiles into my backpack. I can then move over, uh, and then I can put them down. Um, so the backpack is like the text editor's clipboard, um, but it's visible and it's also structure aware. Um, so to give you a taste of that, um, here's, let me show you a different uh, way to complete the same task. So that the edit sequence we just did, we uh, four out of 11 participants used an edit sequence, something like that, um, to complete this task. Uh, and another four, what they did is they uh, selected these two brackets, they picked them up, and then they brought them over. And now you'll notice that there's, uh, there, there's some more jumpiness in the, in the movement of Tyler. Uh, and uh, because uh, now, um, and this is to ensure that the backpack, that where you, uh, that you put down the shards in places that um, where the overall form is reassemblable. Um, so here we had a, uh, uh, so in the former case, we had a balanced backpack and we were allowed to move freely. Uh, but now in this case, we have this imbalanced backpack. And so uh, Tyler restricts your uh, movement to uh, balanced regions. Um, and this is overly conservative. You could imagine uh, putting this down inside one of these pairs of brackets uh, in a textual setting. Uh, but this is a uh, th this does ensure that uh, things will parse correctly in the end. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm out of time. Uh, I did not plan this talk very well. I apologize. But uh, just to give you a quick uh, slide through, um, just a quick overview of what's what's left. Um, you know, we ran a lab study and we had some research questions. We had some questions about how. Uh, Tyler helps first-time users complete programming editing tasks. How they, uh, what their completion tasks, completion times are like, um, and we were also curious about uh, like how much of Tyler's selections, uh, ex selection express expressivity users made uh, took advantage of. Here's a simple language that we used. We had these three editors and these four pairs of transcription and modification tasks, um, and we saw some pretty cool speed ups. Um, but that said, it was a very limited study, very small, very synthetic uh, tasks. Uh, and so we're currently in the process of scaling up Tyler uh, to a more uh, sort of full-fledged editor like so, where you can do just do kind of regular typing. Um, yeah, and uh, so that, I guess that's all I have time for. Um, and so this was my talk on Tyler, a tiny tile-based structure editor. Uh, I'd be happy to chat more and give more demos. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you.